Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today on this Wednesday brought to you by, and that includes Ian Furness. Yeah. Brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. Uh, Canucks scheduled to hit the ice for their morning skate ahead of their season opener against the Oilers at 10.30. Uh, we understand that Akito Hiroshi will be on the ice uh, for the Vancouver Canucks tonight. Do we expect him to be part of the third pairing tonight? Uh, absolutely. With Juleson, uh it looks like Breezebois is not ready to go. That's the early indication from Rogers Arena this morning. There has been a sighting of Akito Hiroshi. There is no uh, official Donnie uh, press release from the Canucks, but if he's at Rogers Arena, you know he's been called up. I also want to get this in. Uh, Bluger not at practice yesterday. Blocked a shot on his ankle versus the mm-hmm. Flames last Friday. We'll see if he plays tonight. Is Ian ready? Yeah. Do we have him? I love this because was it last week or two weeks ago, Ian was ripping into us yeah. for you know talking about you know, who's on the fourth line, yeah. who's on that third defense pairing, and what do we do leading in, into his segment today? <laughs> We're talking about who might be on that third defense pairing. Ian yeah. Furness now from KGR Sports Radio in Seattle. How are you, sir? You took it away from me, Donnie. I mean, like the fact that there's been a sighting of a third pair defenseman being <laughs> called up. I mean, stop the presses. Breaking news in this, Vancouver. <laughs> Ian, this is Vancouver. Get it, I, I, get it through your head. I, Rick, I understand it's Vancouver. You know I love Vancouver. You know I grew up a Canucks fan. All mm. those things are true. But I, listen, our issues for the Kraken last night were a third pair of defense and yeah. and and a fourth Ooh. line that was sketchy at best and curious as to who was scratched and who wasn't. So yeah, man, I'm with you. I'm 100. percent We're all in on this third there, third there pair go. and fourth line. Let's go. Any thoughts on Akita Hiroshi and what he could mean <laughs> to the Vancouver Canucks? Scene? No, big fan of Noah Juleson, though. I mean, I yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, yeah. first round pick of Montreal. Am I correct? Right, former first round pick of yes. Montreal. Did yes, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everett Silvertips. How many? How many of your guys in the states would know that? Huh? You're the huh? only one. You're you're yeah. the only one. Yeah, Ross uh, Tucker, or whoever else you guys have on, doesn't know that. I'll tell you that right now. Well, you know what Ross did yesterday, yeah. and you you tell me if this is right or wrong. He okay. referred to hockey as ice hockey, ice y- hockey. yesterday. It, y- you can't uh-huh. do that, can you? No, no, I, I'm not. It, like, I guess there's field hockey. Maybe is he back east somewhere? Maybe he's got a daughter that plays field hockey or something. Yes, like that. He, he, you know, he, yeah, those, that was little, his excuse. Little prep, yeah, yeah, one of those little prep schools they have back there. So that could have been the case, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah there's ball hockey too. I have to mention. Oh, that, ball hockey. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, big, big, big. Yeah, well, my buddy Terry Ryan's big into that. So away we go. Yep. On we go to talk about the sea, the Seahawks. Ian. The bye week, uh, did it come at a good time uh, for the Seahawks? I know Geno Smith yeah. had some health issues. Good time? Everyone did. I mean, it was the, the MVP uh, a week, you know, I guess, what, eight days, nine days ago was the, the blue tent in New York. I mean, that, that thing was up all game long. People kept going in there. They were down to five backup offensive linemen playing in that game. Uh, a couple starting defensive backs were out. I mean, it was it was just kind of a carnage out there. So it's interesting when the schedule came out and they said, hey, week five is the bye week. And a lot of people were like, ah, this isn't good. We, we'd rather have it later in the year. For Seattle, it's weird how things work out, guys. It was a perfect time. Geno got banged up. Offensive line banged up. Secondary banged up. A lot of guys had some things going on. Uh, I'm not sure who would have actually been able to play last week, for example, if they would have played last Sunday. So, yeah, it came at a perfect time. Um, any, any theory, and it, the, the Seahawks are in uh, uh, in Cincinnati on Sunday. Any yeah. theory as to why those Bengals have struggled so far? Well, Joe Burrow's health seemed to be a big reason, yeah, the and calf. then he looked, yeah, but he looked really healthy on Sunday against Arizona. He scrambled for about a twenty yard gain and looked fine in that regard. He threw the ball over the field. I mean, Arizona is not very good, but he still looked to that looked to be the normal Cincinnati offense with Joe Burrow. He was missing uh, one of his top receivers in T. Higgins. He might be back this week. But they, you know, with Higgins, Boyd, and, and Jamar Chase, who had a record day on Sunday, that, that's as good a threesome you'll find at the wide receiver position in the NFL. Burrow is elite. Their offensive line's been a little bit suspect. I guess that would be maybe if, if you get past the injuries and the, you know, the calf for Burrow and, and Higgins' injury and so forth, their offensive line's not very good. And they've struggled a little bit this year. So that might be as much to blame uh, as it for anything we know that all too well here in Seattle that offensive line can really dictate how things can go south. But I think that, you know, the health of the quarterback at the top of the list, but he looked healthy last week, which is not great news for the Seahawks. 
Ian, the NBA was in Vancouver over the weekend in Seattle last night. Uh, a lot of people in Vancouver want it back. What's the thirst for the NBA in Seattle? Uh, it's through the roof, Rick. All joking aside, I mean, it's through the roof. It, you know, we, we had it for 41. I, I, I really, I think the best way to, 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 you know, paint the picture for people up, up in Vancouver and north of the border would be, you know, losing the Sonics for us was mm. like when Winnipeg lost the Jets. Yeah. Mm. And, and you know, you never lost your, your love for the game. Uh, you'd be bitter at the league, for example, but you never lost your love for the game. It was inevitable it's going to come back, and, and I think that's kind of the best way to put it. We, you know, we've got a world-class arena now. That The arena was the issue before. It became an issue in 1994 when they renovated the old Seattle Center Coliseum into what was then Key Arena. Uh, it just wasn't done right. Uh, it was done on the cheap. It was outdated the second they opened the building up, and, and everything went south from there. But there's a massive thirst. I mean, you just look in the NBA. The NBA, much like you know guys like up in uh, uh, north of the border, I mean, mm. Seattle has NBA players on – every roster throughout the league it's a great basketball community great basketball town at the youth and aau level and, and we'll get it back it's just once they get that tv deal done they'll expand and they'll you know they'll take you know billions of dollars from somebody to get a new a franchise and distribute it out throughout the league but uh, there's a there's a big thirst for it for sure yeah Ian, let's go back to the kraken uh yeah let's do it let's go here we hey, go their first 10 games seven against playoff teams from last year i mean this start is going to be really interesting the first 10 game segment for the crack yeah. and it's it's a pretty tough 10 games to start with and it didn't start well last night if you guys noticed oh uh, with the, four one the, the face off that came at what was it about midnight or something last night after oh. it was all said and done on here uh, you know the espn extravaganza triple header for us and yep. which is great to have the nhl on espn all joking aside but yeah that they they've got to play they did not play their game last night it was an odd I, I maybe you know chalk it up to game one of the season uh, I, I don't know they're one and eight i think all time now against vegas they've had their problems against that team but you know in the playoffs rick they were they were averaging about 45 hits a game the kraken were and that four check was suffocating they were hammering teams in their own end making it really difficult to break out they they had 15 hits last night and really in fact they they had basically 10 uh, they were sitting at 10 and 11 until late in the game. They got a couple late that were meaningless. So, you know, if, if they're allowing teams to break out and a team like Vegas, which scored in transition a couple times last night, they're going to be in trouble. Uh, they just played a, a very strange for them, very strange game. Chalk it up to game one, perhaps. But uh, Vegas had a guy that had nine hits himself, and Seattle had 15 total as a team. They had not, over yeah. half their skaters didn't register one. Wow. And I just bring up, I just bring up that stat because – you know, when Seattle's playing well, when you don't have an elite, you know, scoring team in terms of, you know, high-end skill, they they don't have, you know, the McDavid's, they don't have, you know, you know, your guy in Patterson. They don't have guys like that. They have to create their opportunities on the forecheck, and they didn't do it last night at all. They had some opportunities early. Vince Dunn looked like a guy that's missed a couple weeks with whatever injury he had because he had a couple shots, just great A chances in the in the slot that he just missed the net on. And their power play was abysmal. Uh, they were over last night, and so well for four. That, yeah, and and they had a, and and it's kind of a, a skewed stat because they had a five minute major in there in the third. So yeah. yeah, so I mean it was more like oh for five and a half, and it just it just it just just didn't have a good, a good game last night. But it's one. Uh, I just know this: if they play like that, that looked a lot like year one as opposed to year two. They'll put Cartier probably back in the lineup on Thursday because Tanov got hurt. I don't know why he was a scratch last night anyway. I guess it would have come at the expense of Yamamoto here. I am talking about a fourth line. but uh, There you, you go. Know, Yamam yeah. Yamamoto's, Yamamoto's power play, too, and was probably the best player on their power play last night. Wow. And gives and and he had a little bit of grit more so than anybody else. Tanov gives you nothing. I mean, he just gives you absolutely zip, <laughs> zero, nothing. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, he takes cool head shots, but he didn't register a hit at all didn't do anything Cartier is a guy that can go in there run around a little bit like he did in the playoffs and set a little bit of a tone and I think they needed that last night uh Dumoulin their new defenseman on the third pair with him and Schultz was awful last night they really struggled so you know I, I there's a couple guys sitting down in Coachella Valley named Shane Wright and Riker Evans that are probably you know booking their tickets to come back up here pretty quick if it continues you talk about us you just went through the you entire organization everybody. right there <laughs> yeah I did that strictly for Rick's benefit. Okay. I, I, what are you I, ripping Tanev for? I, He's one of their energy guys. Okay. Listen, <laughs> let, let, let's let's get something straight here. 
just because you take the headshot, uh, you know, that yeah. kind of thing, and, and you sort of run around, if you don't hit anybody when you run yeah, around, okay. then you know what you're doing? You're just running around. You're not accomplishing anything, Rick. You know better than that. You know better, Rick. If anybody knows better, it's you know better than that. Okay, hold it. Tanev got hurt. Any update? No, I mean, it, it, it was bad. Uh, yeah, it looked like a... Where are we going to do a Brandon Tanev ah, Brandon, update here? Former, like, seriously? Hey, no. Former Surrey well, Eagle. Hey. Huh. I, I know, I know. And I remember when Surrey played a little harder than that, too, back when Pat Smith was the coach in the day. You know, but Whoa. the... Uh, uh, there's a poll for you. Uh, the uh, <laughs> I, I think it looked like it was maybe more of a knee issue than a head. Now, okay. there's, a, there's a hearing today. The NHL, your friends at the NHL office are going to have a hearing today for the kid that hit him. Uh, but when he got hit up high, which was where the major was called, he actually, when he went down, it looked like he kind of twisted his knee, kind of buckled on him. And remember, he had a, a massive knee injury two years ago. So that's a little bit frightening. And, and hopefully he's right. I don't want to kill the guy. I, I, I like Tanov. I just think that I think he doesn't give you quite as much as advertised. I'll just say that. Excellent ice hockey report. Hey, uh, very quickly, uh, Washington, Oregon, seven versus eight here. Oh, let's go, uh, Ducks! Come on, yeah, Ducks! Well, let's go. Well, you're far on. Are you listening you're to me a right Wazoo now? Go guy. Ducks! Well, yeah, what happens? Ducks. What happens here? It's in Seattle. Yeah, it's in Just Seattle. In case you uh, didn't first, know. first time these two teams have played, you know, unbeaten and high, both in the top ten, I think ever. It's a massive game. Like it's a massive game. I, I think it's going to be high scoring. Oregon's defense is a little bit better. I just, I'm not going to bet. I, I want Oregon to win with every fiber of my being because <laughs> I hate everything about Washington and the purple and the gold. But until somebody slows down Michael Penix in that offense, I think that Washington will find a way to win at home. It's going to be a great game, great college atmosphere. It's what college football should be. It's too bad it's going to be in the Big Ten next year. But those guys, yeah. they'll put on a show on Saturday. It'll be a lot of fun. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, Coachella Valley roster next week, Rick. All right. Yeah, Ab we, Abbotsford Canucks. As we, well. look, we look forward, forward to that. Can't wait to do that. See you. <laughs> Ian Furness, uh, KGR Sports. We're out of time because uh, you wanted to get you? a health update on Brandon Tanev. Well, you asked the football question at the end. What's well, kind of a big game? Just, well, I just know in case that. You, you didn't know.